Hello everyone, Curtis White here from the Cannondale CyclocrossWorld.com team and welcome to the Etia Cyclocross in Bredna. And the conditions today were around 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 4 to 5 centigrade and a good mix of heavier mud and hard pack slick and fast sections. And this course is normally tight and fast but the heavier mud added an interesting element to it. And you'll see just past the finish line we took a left and the start was just on the right with literally a 25 meter lead into the grass up that steep little embankment and the hook down to the left and that's really the whole shot and that hook was a real bottleneck point and if you are far enough back you might be putting a foot down or dabbing just to get through it but we're into this heavier mud section a couple right turns and we're coming by pit one right here now as i just mentioned we have a good mix between some heavier mud sections and some faster and slick straightaways on this course and i chose to run challenge Lima's tires with 1920 PSI but I did see a fair amount of mid-range tires on the start line and racers really had to decide whether they wanted more control in the turns with a little bit more rolling resistance or a faster tire on the straights with a little bit more risk of sliding and I chose to have a little bit more control but I did find that those efforts added up over the course of the hour. Now after pit one we're in this heavier section of the mud here and the course deteriorated over the course of the day where we were running this part of the course later in the day. So for those heavier tractable mud sections that you're wanting a mud tire in, we're running this section so you really don't need the tires there. So remounting up over that concrete slab, up that right, kind of slingshotted you up this little riser there. And it's really kind of single track up and over this mound. There's a lot of bumps on this course and there's really, this is the smoothest line here. A couple bumps as we come back down. A rut shoots you back up the side of this hill and we're on this straightaway for really the next couple hundred meters. It's a couple risers. There's really a little opportunity to pass here and there, but not a lot of opportunity and it's a real single file race. Up that riser, watch out for that bump there on the left. And we're gonna run into a couple really interesting whoops here down the ruts get really deep at the bottom mind the front wheel there up this riser down and this next whoop provided a bit of challenge in that it was really steep and greasy and you had to really hit that rut all the way to the right to carry momentum up and over that pedal over the top sets you right right up nice for that next pump we're bending to the right a little bit of a greasy corner but really look for that traction patch on the outside for that grass up and over that little bump there used to be a little stair there in the past but they took that out this year the approach was a little bit different and if you're, for a lot of these whoops if you're in that rut it's really hard packed in the rut and your wheels aren't going to leave that rut so if you find that rut and it sets you up well for the next whoop and the next turn really hold on to that and really there's no need to break through that so after these couple of whoop sections we're on that other straightaway parallel to where we were just a minute ago and this is one of those heavier pedaling sections where having a faster tire really would pay dividends later on in the race with just cutting down on the efforts. And we'll see that we'll have one more heavier mud section coming up right by pit two. But again, having a faster tire would pay off in the long run and that's something to consider for future editions of this race. So we're coming back up. We're gonna drop down to the left over this curb and we're back into the, this heavier mud section right by where we were with pit one. We were running that section earlier in the lap, but we were riding this all the way through. I found that the line going into pit two was a little bit faster, so strategically I was pitting every lap on pit two. There was a nice rut going into the pit and I was able to make up a position or two. But this part of the course is really so heavy that I felt like if I had the heavier tires, I could maintain that traction and I was gonna save energy in the long run. But it's all about weighing this, having that give and take. Do I want a faster tire with less traction or having more traction in the slower tire in the straightaways? But you'll see this mud is really heavy and potentially you are just as fast running it as you would be riding it. But it's just muscling the bike through the section, real diesel effort. We're coming off the World Cup in Dendermond. Everyone was familiar with those diesel efforts there. Going through that puddle felt like there was a bit harder of a surface under that puddle. But we're coming out of the heavier mud section up over this curb. It's a slick riser here. The wheels are really spinning just to get over, muscle the bike up and over, get back up to speed. And now we're starting to go in the fastest part of the course, hopping over this curb. It's gonna be bending to the left. We're gonna have a really nice off camber here. 
But the next part of the course is really easy to break up and where I'm resting, where do I expend my energy, where do I attack the group, where do I rest. Bending to the right, we're into this sand pit. The sand pit was really rideable all through pre-ride, especially if you're coming into these sections fresh, fresh. A lot of these obstacles are easier to ride when you're coming in rested, but in a race situation, the pace is so high and your heart rate's jacked that it's really difficult to nail all of these sections every single time. So flatter, faster part of the course, getting back up to speed, some nice flowing turns here. The turns are a little greasy, but you'll find out that all these turns are flowing. It's, you don't have to scrub all the speed through here. You can still maintain a fair amount of momentum and not need that heavier tire to maintain that traction. So we're on to this sidewalk type here. Real straight away for the next 100 meters or so. Bending slightly to the right. Couple ruts, but there's nothing that a mid-range tire couldn't handle. Nice bank bending to the left. And there's a nice straightaway for the next 100 meters or so. It's a really nice flowing course all through here. You're gonna go through this ditch, up this riser. And again, you're really keeping the tires in a straight line through a lot of this. There's not a lot of slow turning where you could lose the traction. So we're coming out, dropping down this hill, hop over that little ditch there. Doesn't seem that big. And it really was an easy hop if you had enough speed. Going up the side of the hill, bending to the right, coming down and we're approaching the set of barriers where typically the FDS cross series runs barriers a little bit shorter than a super prestige the super prestige runs them about 40 centimeters they seem like 35 centimeters roughly five meters apart but easy to hop especially on a slight riser there it was better to maintain your momentum not expend that energy running through the barriers bunny hop them it was clean through these couple ruts here and we're really in the last couple minutes of this course. And if you're in a group, it's important to have good position coming into the sprint because the finish straight is really short and narrow. So it's really whoever wins the battle to that last corner could win the sprint. So we have a little bit of a rutted mud section here, but nothing to really worry about up the side of the hill. And it's gonna be bending steady to the left for the next 15 seconds or so. I mean, dropping down the side of this hill and it's a real bending left this corner got a little bit of greasy towards the end, but if you carry momentum well, right up and over the hill, bending back down. This was another greasy corner. We saw it got really slick, but if you arc the corner just right, use that ditch to your advantage to maintain your momentum. You're fine. Swing wide to the outside. Look for that green traction patch. A couple of ditches to hop through here. One, we got another one coming up through that. And we're just about to the finish straight here. We're gonna be bending to the right. And that's the course. It's a fast flowing track with plenty of variability with not any one feature that was too difficult, but it took a well-rounded approach with equipment and breaking down the course. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more videos through the course of the cyclocross season and share with your friends. And you can visit curtisjwhite.com slash in the red for more content. Take care, stay healthy, keep riding, and we'll catch you next in ball.